Hello, welcome to the Brain Scrub, a somewhat improvised approach to mental health. My name is Glenn Sollers. Thanks for tuning in today. Today, I want to talk about a book that I recently listened to by Jerry, J E R R Y, Colonna, C O L O N N A, titled Reboot, R E B O O T, Leadership and the Art of Growing Up, and found this book absolutely fascinating because this guy Jerry is a coach he runs a program where he works with senior leaders and helps them essentially grow up by seeing how they themselves are getting in their own way and what he likes to call our ghosts which I know as our shadows that stuff that we don't want to talk about that we keep behind us and maybe we don't even know that it's there but it tends to run our life. And sometimes we have repetitive situations that are occurring in our life based on our ghosts of the past, creating our future. And we're not really conscious of it until we actually stop, connect and realize what am I doing and what's going on and what are the pros, what are the cons and how do old patterns of my behavior show up now in my present and the future that I'm creating. That's one reason I really enjoyed reading this book was because his thinking aligns with what I've learned and what I know. The other thing is Jerry had a similar, from what I understand, upbringing to me where Life was very unpredictable. Didn't know what was going to walk through the door that evening. Didn't know what was going to happen at night. Had to follow the rules. Didn't have a say in the matter of things. I always had to say yes. I had to please other people. It was a very traditional type of German home, from what I understand, like the stereotypical traditional, where you do as you're told and you don't have a say in the matter of things. Now, Jerry, I don't know what his history was around that, but that's mine. What was created within him, and I can recognize this, is something called hypervigilance. And hypervigilance is this need to be safe, which we all have, but what we end up doing to be safe is we monitor our environment for potential dangers, threats, we're on guard, our nervous system might be impacted, we might fidget, we might do things like smoking, we might have other activities like biting our nails, whatever it might be, we have this nervous tendency, we may be worried and we have this heightened state of awareness. And It makes sense because if you grew up in an environment where your external environment was not a safe place to be and you didn't know what's going to happen, you had to become hypervigilant. My gosh, you had to do that in order to survive and kind of read the environment. How am I going to make it through today? I can laugh at this now, but oh my gosh, it still impacts me now where I have to really watch myself and let go of things, let go of this need to control. There are many cons to hypervigilance, but I have to tell you, there's a lot of pros as well. Look at what I'm doing in my career. I am doing what I feel is my dream work because I am building community, love, connection, inner trust, inner belief, self-awareness through the work I do. And for me, that's been the greatest gift in life is going through that journey on my own. And now I can share that with other people. I can coach. I can support others. I know how to inspire, influence situations. I have empathy. I have drive. I have compassion. Now, there are times where it can be too much. And I get that. As Jerry goes through this book, he talks a bit about how our history really informs our programs, how we operate, how we sometimes are jailed. And I love this term that he used. Sometimes we're jailed by the perceptions of others. And the way that I like to think of that is we 
create this prison around us that sometimes is hard to escape based on what we're told or how we were perceived when we were young, or what did I make things mean? And going back to a childhood brain, and I'm not thinking as an adult, but thinking as a child, this happened to me, and what is the result? What is the cage that I've created for myself? And my cage would be, I need to try harder. I'm not good enough. I have to watch out for my environment. People are out to get me. And it's no wonder when I dream at night, I'm always the hero trying to save the day. I I end up going through mazes and tunnels to find my way out of things. My dreams are like the adventure, action, drama, thriller movies out there. I wish I could record them. They're actually quite exciting and bizarre at the same time. So if you grew up in an environment where you had to be on guard consider the pros and cons now as an adult in the career that you're in. And he states that it's important to understand why we do what we do. And that's self-awareness. Why do I do what I do? And I loved how he shared that there's tons of how-to books out there. How to do this, how to get into conflict, how to be happy, how to deal with depression, many how-tos. There's the tools out there that we can use readily available. We can just Google it and we'll find millions of videos on how to overcome what we want to deal with and nothing changes. Maybe. The why. The why you do what you do is important to know because if I know the why, I can start putting the puzzle pieces together to figure out, well, what's next? What do I do? What do I need to let go of? What's at risk if I let go of this? And it goes on. There are things I want to share from the book that really helped me a lot. And that is, first of all, what stories have you created about yourself and what stories have others created about you that maybe you're living into? A story about myself is I'm not good enough. What do I do when I facilitate sometimes is I am very hard on myself I am very self-critical. I get a bit nervous. I feel I need to be perfect. And if I think about, is this new in my life? No. (laughs) And to ask yourself, like think about yourself as an adult, what's working, what's not working. Is that new in your life? No, 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 no. It's not new. Well, how long ago did it start? What happened when it started? Who was involved? Who in your life reminds you of that right now as you examine that part of you? And what we end up doing is we put ourselves in situations sometimes that allow our old habits to repeat itself. Now, would I change the job I'm doing right now as a facilitator? No, not on your life. I love doing it. And I do it because I've always loved trying to build teamwork and getting people to communicate and connect and love. And that was my job when I was a kid. So I've actually been in my career since I was two years old. Thank you very much. And I'm pretty well certified at it now in terms of doing what I love doing. To say to yourself, yeah, what are those stories about me? Or what are those things that people say about me? And how am I living into that? We tend to find ourselves and put ourselves in situations where these old habits can live on because our brain does not like change. You might ask yourself, why do I keep on making the same mistakes over and over again? Why am I in another relationship where I'm not speaking up and advocating for my needs? Why is it that I'm being bullied by people? There is one reason, and that's you. That's your habits. They want to live on. You've learned to be this way. That's your program. That's what you do. And it takes a very courageous and daring individual to dive into who they are. And as Jerry says in this book, reboot themselves so that they can create what they want to be, not who they are. And we all have that power, folks. We all have the power to let things go. I have the power to not be hypervigilant. And it's a choice. And it's reprogramming my mind so that I can start doing that. Two questions that he has in this. And if you think about situations or just what you're 
involved in right now in your life, or maybe you're having conflict with somebody out there, or maybe you're having conflict with yourself, or maybe something's not going right in your career or in your home life, something's not going right. One thing he says here is to ask yourself, what is it I need to do and say that I'm not doing or saying? What is that thing? And wait for an answer to emerge. Something is bound to come up. And another great question is to ask yourself, well, what are people saying to me that I need to start listening to that I'm not listening to? We don't ask these questions for many reasons. One is self-preservation, fear, largely fear of the answer and actually doing it. And fear doesn't really get us anywhere in a lot of cases because that actually builds onto our stress and anxiety. If we just don't deal with stuff, like just deal with it, get through it, do what needs to be done so you can live a freer life where you're not trapped in the jail that you've created for yourself based on how you perceive yourself and the perceptions of others. Remember, our old programming was designed to keep us safe. Back to hypervigilance for a moment. Jerry also states in his book that sometimes we can take on the fears of our parents and those fears become embedded in our life. And I'm going to uh, try to dive into what were the fears my parents might have had and an easy way to dive into that and thinking about what they might have feared is to actually talk about what you fear (laughs) and (laughs) it probably links up somehow right i (laughs) so my parents definitely feared losing everything they saw this happen in world war ii lost everything they made sure they hung tightly onto their money that they were very frugal We did spend money once in a while, but money was a central factor is you don't want to lose your money. You need it. And mortgage rates could go up and we're going to just build a basement with tons of food in there in case anything happens. So there was fear of losing everything. There was also fear of speaking the truth, sharing exactly what's going on in life and I noticed this in both my parents. They would tiptoe around and do things behind the backs of others. And it was a learned behavior where my mom wanted to spend money on my brother and I, but she had to do it in secret and never tell my dad anything. And some of us do this. We do things in secret because we're fearful of bringing things up with our spouse because they might be upset. So we're not living in integrity. Other fears I brought on were fears of like something as simple as, did I lock the door? Did I leave the iron on? And to worry about that. So I end up worrying about all these different things. We grew up on a farm. We were always worried about what was going on in the farm. We needed to take care of a lot of things. So it was fear of missing out on something and not taking care of something. And that's a reason why I think I control a lot. Because when I was a kid, my parents had to control a lot of what was going on. And there was also the fear of being open and honest with each other and the fear of unpredictability and not having control over a situation. I definitely fear that. And what I do is I tend to control so I can feel safe because if I'm controlling, I can feel safe because I'm creating my own destiny. If we can start doing this, the outside world We'll start having less control over how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about others. We can just be who we are without any risk feeling neutral. If we can start diving into our history, build that self-awareness, which takes courage. It's not an easy journey to look at yourself. It can be very painful looking at ourselves. However, that investigation, that inquiry allows us to put the puzzle pieces together, understand the why, and create a new way of doing things, which would be the how, and we become more resilient. Making this sense of the world 
gives us freedom to just put all that stuff aside, all the expectations, the perceptions that you think others have you. Wow. You know what? Many of them, if they're negative are probably wrong and people generally, otherwise they wouldn't be in your life, probably think highly of you. I believe many of my friends, and I know this, they've told this to me, that they think highly of me. I was never thought highly of when I was a kid, so I have this addiction to being hard on myself. And a lot of people find it really hard to get positive recognition from other people because how often did you get positive recognition as a child? Me? Hardly ever, my brother, all the time, in my perspective. That's what I remember. He got tons of recognition, and he was able to live into that and recreate it because, hey, I did this, more recognition. I can do more of this. I had the opposite thing going on. I was trying to take care of my parents, and I was inspiring them. I was in a bookworm. I was in the trenches fighting the war. And again, we replay these struggles in our life. So if we can start investigating what's going on, we can stop doing these things that are getting in our way and choosing a different path because there is a consequence. The other part I want to touch on briefly that he touches on in this book, and I love the analogy that he uses around, we all have a crow crying, crying at us about things that we should or shouldn't be doing. I like to call it the duck. I love going to a pond and listening to ducks. It sounds like a bunch of grumpy old people complaining about what's not working in the world. And sometimes I have this duck that's sitting on my shoulder just quacking away at me and thinking, you're not good enough. There you go, quack again. You messed up. You're not perfect. And we all have a dark and a light side of our behaviors and to really be willing to look at that to think about what are those things that I'm doing right now in life and why am I doing it? What's my agenda, my real agenda, this hidden agenda, maybe we're not telling people. And for me, I do what I do because I want to be recognized. I do what I do because I want to show people that I'm good enough and to be open with that. Because if you're leading yourself and or leading an organization, if you take time to look at your agenda, you might see how some of your behaviors may be negative Many of them are likely positive, but are you just doing what you're doing to fill a gap or a void that maybe you've developed over time in your life? What fears do you need to let go of in order to move forward, be your authentic self, lead with your heart and not with your head? Folks, we can all reboot our lives and not seeing that life as it is for you right now is terrible. And maybe it is, but life is a balance of good and bad. Another thing he shares in this book is if you were to go out there and ask people if they've had any struggles in their life, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that has not. Sometimes we think we're in this all alone but we've all had challenges. We've all had great things in our life. And oh my gosh, that just reminded me of a security guard I talked to yesterday. When I went to this one company, I walked through the front door. Security guard was super friendly, outgoing. And after I did my workshop, I went up to him and I said, I just want to say that you are the nicest security guard I've ever run into. And he said, thank you. I love what I do. And it's so important for me to look at the great side of life, the fact that we're given life, that I'm able to do what I'm doing right now. And then he got into a bit of a story how he used to be in a band when he was younger. They were successful. But then when he was 34, something went wrong with the band. And he kind of lost all that. That all went by the wayside. And now he's doing a job as a security guard. And he said, you know what? I am so blessed to actually have this work that I do and I'm going to enjoy it. There's things that life gives us that may not always be good, 
but it's important to embrace that stuff that is great and to know that there's a balance of the good and the bad and to be focused on making the best present and future you possibly can regardless of your circumstances and if your circumstances may be holding you back from doing that to start asking yourself the question what needs to be said that i'm not saying what needs to be done that i am not doing life is so precious enjoy it make choices that will get you to where you want to be live your purpose live your journey thanks for listening